real. Um, not every story gets told. Um, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's unfair. That we get heard, that we're accepted, that we can live in unity, and love is love. At Farragut Square, Janice Park, WUSA 9. New information tonight. One man is in the hospital after getting shot on North Capitol Street. This happened a few hours ago. Police say that man has serious injuries. They're still searching for the suspect. A partial building collapse shut down a local nightclub tonight. This happened in the 600 block of Florida Avenue Northwest between Shaw and LaDroit Park. Fortunately, no one was hurt. A task force determined too much weight caused that club's roof deck to buckle. Engineers are now working on the problem. No word yet on when the club will reopen. Starting tomorrow, drivers will have to pay to park along the National Mall. Workers began installing meters Thursday, and this brings the total number of metered parking spaces around the mall to about 1,200. The National Park Service says paid parking helps create turnover. It also provides money that can be used to enhance the visitor experience there. The Park Service says it wants to encourage people to take public transportation to the museums and the monuments. The Fairfax County School Board will meet tomorrow to talk about whether or not to change the name of Jeb Stewart High School. The board will hear from committee members on the pros and cons. Some say it's a painful reminder of slavery and the Civil War. A vote on the issue is set for June 22nd. A Maryland state trooper in the hospital tonight after his patrol car was struck by an alleged drunk driver. State police say Trooper Solomon Flash was parked at the scene of a traffic crash in Prince George's County when 37-year-old Chris Dent reportedly struck Flash with his car. That crash happened around 3.30 this morning on northbound Route 4 and Presidential Parkway. Police say after the crash, Dent's car reportedly struck a pedestrian standing near a guardrail. Both that pedestrian and the state trooper were taken to the hospital. Police have charged Dent with driving under the influence, and they say he may end up facing even more charges. In the race to be the next governor of Virginia, it is a tight battle for the Democrats, and a favorite has emerged for the Republicans. This according to a poll done by Hampton University. On the Republican side, the poll says Ed Gillespie has a 15-point lead over his opponents, Frank Wagner and Corey Stewart. Democrat Tom Perriello has a slight lead over Ralph Northam, 6% according to the poll. We have an entire voter's guide, everything you need to know on the WUSA 9 website and the app. Voting begins on Tuesday. All right, let's talk about how hot it is out there. Howard Bernstein's the man who knows when we're going to get some relief. Looks like midweek we'll get some relief. Still rather warm tonight. I hope your AC is working well. We've got a temperature still at 80 degrees downtown. Fairfax is 79. Cool spots locally are in the low 70s here in the humidity. If you've been outside, you feel how it is really ramped up tonight during the day and even this evening. Nothing to show you. There's high pressure overhead and that means sinking air and that suppresses any development of clouds and showers and looks like that's going to be the case for the most part again on Monday. So we'll start Monday morning dry and mild and muggy mid 60s to low 70s early and will quickly warm up to around 90 by lunchtime. Then in the afternoon, yeah, not much activity. Once again, highs, low 90s, maybe 95. That's what I'm forecasting for tomorrow at National. I think most areas, though, stay a little bit cooler than that. Now, Tuesday, we'll see a front up across Pennsylvania. Once again, lunchtime temps near 90. But in the afternoon on Tuesday, some spotty showers and storms. And that will be the precursor for, I think, more widespread activity for Wednesday. And with the front coming and more activity, yeah, that means temperatures will start to cool off a little bit as we head toward the second half of the week. We'll have that full seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Deborah. Thank you so much, Howard. Closing arguments resume tomorrow in the trial of a Minnesota police officer who shot and killed a black man after a traffic stop. Officer Geronimo Yanez is charged with manslaughter in the death of Philando Castile during a traffic stop last July. Castile's girlfriend streamed the whole thing live on Facebook. Castile informed Yanez that he had a gun and a permit to carry. Yanez testified Castile disregarded his commands not to pull it out of his pocket. If convicted, Yanez faces 10 years in prison. President Trump wrapped up a quiet weekend in New Jersey with a fundraiser this evening. But first, he fired off several tweets, which some of his fellow Republicans weren't very happy.